Hi, my name is Chloe and welcome to the section of the tutorial where we learn how to import data into Chime 2. In this section of the tutorial, we will be running two major commands. The first one being Chime Tools Import and the second one being Chime Demux Summarize. The data we have for the PD Mouse tutorial is already demultiplexed, so we don't have to demultiplex this data, but we are still going to run Chime Demux Summarize to view our data. Before we get into all of that, I want to talk about where we are in our directories just to make sure we're all on the same page. So I'm going to ls in my user directory to find the workshop directory. It's really important that you're in this directory, so make sure that all of your data is in the workshop directory. So I cd'd into the work doc direc workshop directory, which means I changed directories. And then I'm going to ls in there, and I can see my mouse underscore tutorial directory, which you guys should have made in one of the sec previous sections of the tutorial. And I'm going to cd into that mouse tutorial. And now I'm in there. So let's check out the data we have in the mouse tutorial directory. You have both of your metadata files. You downloaded metadata and visualized it in the last section of the tutorial. So there's your data from that. Now we are looking to import our data using a manifest file. Importing data is probably one of the hardest steps, but we need to get our data into Chime 2. So in this section of the tutorial, we'll talk about the type and the format needed to import demultiplex data. Importing, importing demultiplex data into Chime means that we don't have to demultiplex it, but it does mean that we have to use a manifest file. Some data does not come already demultiplexed, and we have to run Chime demultiplex in order to demux in order to demultiplex it. Um, if you want to see steps on importing demultiplex data and running Chime demux, I would encourage you to check out the moving pictures tutorial. Okay, so let's get into running our commands. So first off, we are going to download some files from the internet. My first one, I'm going to use wget and I'm going to copy and paste that all over here and enter and run it and then I'm going to run I'm going to run the command ls to see if that data actually downloaded like it said it did and we can see that it did so hooray now let's go to the next section where we're downloading our sequences I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did copy from that little guy right there paste and enter Awesome. So our sequences are amplified using an earth microbiome primer and were sequenced on Illumina technology. They are 150 reads, base pairs reads, and our so our sequences will be slightly too short to do paired and read analysis downstream. They're too short basically because they aren't long enough to have sufficient overlap and that means that we can't use paired end reads, but we can use single end reads. So we're good to go. Uh, we should have just downloaded our data, so I'm going to check. And we can see that we have a demuxseek.zip file. So a zip file is compressed, so we can't access it like that, and we'll need to unzip it. Luckily, there's a command, unzipped. So I'm going to copy from this little guy over here. I'm going to paste it right in. And you can see all of the sequences that were in that zip file inflating. And now if we ls, we can see that we have a directory called the which have all of our sequences in them, which is perfect. So now we are going to take a look at our manifest file. Um, I'm going to go a little off script here. The tutorial says to use head, but I'm going to use nano so that we don't get that line wrap effect and it's just a little bit clearer. So let me zoom out just a tiny, eeny, oh, not what I meant to do. Sorry. I don't understand what happened. I'm going to exit this and try again. Okay. We're going to... Okay. So I just um, am trying that again. I think I just kind of... My computer just kind of freaked out a little bit. But So now we have our manifest file. 
So I exited, sorry, I just want to back up a little bit. I exited using control X and then I just retype or I re copied the nano manifest file so I could see it. So now we can see our file. Our manifest file is a tab separated comma. There's one column called sample ID, which has a unique identifier for each sample right here. And then there's the absolute path, which tells us where the sample is located. And that's basically what a manifest file is. Um, if you had paired end reads, you might have another, you would have another absolute path um, called the reverse path. And this would be the forward one. But since we just have a single paired end read, we just have one absolute file path. So I'm going to control X to exit out of that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I like to be able to see what I'm typing. And we are going to actually import the data. So we're going to scroll down to this Chime Tools Import. We're going to copy from this little guy and we're going to paste them in. So the Chime Tools import has a type which is a sample data with sequences. This basically indicates that we have sample data that was single end reads and has quality information. The input format file basically it says that it's a single end FASFA manifest thread 33v2 which means that Chime can expect a manifest file that has a sample ID and one absolute path. It will also assume that the FRED offset used for the positional quality score is uh, in all of the files is about 33. Uh, FRED, FRED 33 is pretty standard for modern Illumina runs. And then finally our input path is a manifest.qzv file, or nope, a manifest.tsv file and we tell Chime where that is, and then we tell Chime that we want it to output our dmux.qza file. So uh, now that is all imported, so let's ls, and we can see that dmuxseq.qza file. So that's awesome. We have data. It's imported. Beautiful. Now we need to look at our data. So how we need to do that is we need to run Chime dmux summarize in order to get a visualization. So let's look more into that little command. So most Chime commands you can run dash dash help in order to see more information about the command. So here we can see that we can input data. It has to be an artifact. We already have that. You can see the sample data quality with sequences with quality probably should look pretty familiar. The paired end sequences with quality and joined end sequences with quality are also inputs that this command takes, but we're, our data is sample data sequences with quality. Um, this parameter says how many sequences will be selected for the quality plot scores. We're not really going to mess with that. Our output says like where our visualization will be and what it will be named. And then there's some miscellaneous stuff like um, output directory, which outputs unspecific results to a specific directory verbose which makes the output like more wordy like it explains more what you've done and then quiet which means it says nothing if it's run perfectly then there are examples citations and also help for the for the command which we just ran right um, but now that we've taken a look into chime 2 or not chime 2 now that we've taken a look into chime dmux summarize let's actually run that command so as I said we have an input of our data that we ran dmuxseeks.qza and then an, a visualization called dmuxseek.qzv. So I am running that and that should make that should visualize our dmuxseek.qza into a visualization. So as you can see, we have our visualization. So ls and we can see our visualization in our directory. Awesome. So now we want to visualize it. How we're going to visualize things in this workshop is we're going to go to workshop-server.chime2 slash zippy owl. Zippy owl is mine. You enter your username. Uh, then we're going to go to the mouse tutorial and we're going to we're going to right click on this dmuxseek.qzv file. We're going to copy link address. 
then we're going to head over to Chime 2. View, my favorite website on the internet. And we're going to view our results. Typed it wrong. Don't know what I typed wrong, but Google figured it out. After we've gotten to Chime 2 view, let's click on that highlighted link from web. Okay. And we're going to go. And so Chime 2 is going to be able to visualize it. Let's walk through a little bit of what we see here. So here's our sequence count summary. It basically says what the minimum count is, what the mean count is, what the maximum count is, and what the total amount of sequence counts in our data is. We can kind of see that visualized a little bit in this forward read histogram, which allows us to see that the majority of our, sequence, our samples have sequence counts that fall between 4,000 and 6,000. And some of our sequence counts, no, not some of our, one of our sequence counts is 16,000. And then you can see that in more detail. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. In more detail, here where you can see the sample ID and the amount of sequence counts for that sample ID. So for instance, this sample has the 16,000 sequence counts. Well, like this sample has 5,408 sequence counts. So awesome. Then we will go to our quality interactive plot. So this basically allows us to see the quality of our plot. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so that I can get this plot and my chart in there. So basically what this plot let us, lets us do is it will allow us to see the quality of our data at a specific position or a specific grasp of positions or just in general. So right now we can see that our data is pretty good all over. If we scroll in to just see a couple of them, we can see like points 4 through 19 or 20, which is awesome. And then we can like look at a specific one and get more information on its quality scores. So for position 13, we can see that its average or its median quality score is 37, which is great. And its highest one is 38, and its lowest one is 17 in this plot. Awesome. So that's definitely like information that's very helpful. And then a little bit further down, we can see the sequence length summary, which just says how many nucleotides are in each sequence, which is 150. So then we're going to go to Providence. So Providence is awesome because it kind of keeps track a record of whatever you've done. Not very descriptive here because all we've done is import our data and visualize it, but it is something that we're able to do. So right here we can see the square kind of tells us like the actions we've done. So right here we can see that we have imported our manifest, or like our data through a manifest. Here we can see that we visualized our data using the action summarize. And then these little dots is kind of the result details. So it explains the results that we got. So this is we got our imported data. And this says that we our result was a visualization. Awesome. It's great to like have that information for the future more like it. So if you go back to this, um, if you go back to the data you've run analysis on and you go like, I have no idea what I did, it's awesome because Chime has a providence. Um, but now let's go back to our Chime 2 view and answer some of those discussion questions. So I'm going to skip down to the bottom one real quick. And it says, if you're working on the tutorial alongside someone else, why does your plot look slightly different from your neighbors? If you aren't working alongside someone else, try running the commands a few times and comparing results. So the answer to this is actually right here. These plots were generated using random sampling of 10,000 out of 250,000 sequences without replacement. So basically what this means is that everyone gets a slightly different uh, quality plot because it's randomly generated out of 250,000 samples and you only get 10,000 of those samples. So although we don't have the same sample, like the quality plot, they should be roughly the same because 
hopefully everyone has a representative 10,000 samples. Okay, so I'm going to go up to the top of the discussion questions now, and it says, after demultiplexing, which sample has the lowest sequence depth? So we can find that in our overview of our DMUX file, and we're going to find that in our per sample sequence counts. So this allows us to look at a sample and see what its sequence counts are. So this is the highest sequence count, so the lowest one's going to be at the bottom. So our lowest one is this guy, recipient for 460 W, I'm not going to say the whole thing, but this guy down here. And then our its sequence counts are 4,237. 4, awesome. Now, what is the median sequence length? So we can find that again on the interactive quality pot page where the DMUX sequence length is 100, like all of them are 150 nucleotides. So the median length is 150. This is pretty common to have all of them be 150 for Illumina runs, but it may differ if you use different sequencing techniques. Um, just to clarify that, that was a little confusing. It's common for Illumina runs to have all of the same length Ours are specifically 150 nucleotides. And then our next one is, what is the median quality score at 127? So the, er, 125, I don't know where I got 127. So I'm just gonna zoom, that's not helpful. To back out of a zoom, you double click on the graph. Um, so I'm gonna zoom in to a little bit of this so that I could just get a, I can get a better view of uh, 125. So this is sequence 125, and if we look at our plot, we can see that sequence 125 has a median of 38. So now we're going to go on to our checkpoint. What is a good position to consider trimming or truncating at? So trimming and truncating are for denoising, and we'll get into that later in our next section of our tutorial. So I'm not going to go too much into it, but we are able to see that our data is pretty even overall. So that gives me an idea that we might be able to use the full 150 base pairs. Um, but again, we'll go into that in more detail in the next section. So what did we learn today? We learned how to import data, how to visualize the dmox.qza file, and how to read it, as well as start to understand where might be a good place to trim and truncate our data. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I hope this was helpful.